Yo, it's Jolly here. We're gonna do the second game of helping my uh, clanmate with some stuff. Um, okay, this time we got uh, same matchup, Isis versus Ra, but it is on uh, Oasis. So just checking this out. Haha, <laughs> you can see that, dude. <laughs> oh man, this sucks. Ah, oh, I hate it when you goof like that at the start. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, you should have gone to that hunt and got hunting dogs. Uh, oh, you're going now. It's going to be slow on you, that's rough. Are you researching hunting dogs? You should do that, like now. Um. Get three villagers on that. Get three villagers on gold. And send your pharaoh. I would go here and back with my pharaoh. Like, do a, do a double thick, like, line. So the line of sight this way. And then come back up towards the side of the map and go back. And that, that's where I would scout the pharaoh. You'll probably find, like, six guards. If you got lucky, you might find, like, more like ten sometimes. Um, and then your priest can just do the obelisk on the other side. So that that's something you can work on with scouting. Scouting's weird, like, people, I used to be like this too when I didn't scout well, I would be like, oh, I don't really want to be too aggressive, or oh, I would rather have him empowering my economy, and you, you're just not giving yourself the chance of winning a game, so it's hard to switch your mindset sometimes, but, but learning to scout aggressively and more efficiently is, is, is so good. Because 90% of, like, winning this game is... Is from... From playing to the map. Most people don't play to the map. So this villager here, dude. Make him go build a monument and then your houses. You don't, you don't need to be going seven. Five or six. But because you had to move from the food, you would have needed to do six. But if you've gone straight away, you'd only need five. So, he's found some good food there. Alright. Yeah, this needs to be scouted. Because cause you don't know where your giraffes are. That's what like you're trying to find. And fucking there they are in that area. Because like, you know the oasis is set spawners. There's going to be zebra. There's going to be giraffes. And they sometimes sit with gazelles. Sometimes they don't. Um, and there's going to be berries. And, and the, you got to look for that those food sources. It's, it's always nice if you build a granary. Oh man. <laughs> uh, oh man, <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, if you're gonna have a late advance like this, go through to wood. That's good you use the chickens there. Have you got husbandry? Yeah, nice. Okay, good job. I'm picking those up. That's a late classical, and you could have avoided all of that. You could have still hit like a 520 classical if you played that right. If you had used five villages on this hunt, and then sent um, a couple of you scouted this, when they finish that, you go there, and the others are gathering here, and can just go to the berries. And then, like you did, just keep adding food. Yeah, you could have easily got a nice time, but. Oh well. Just, yeah, so if you go three, you can use all three of these villages to make your armory, and you still get shaft mine. Like, you're leaving them on to get shaft mine. No! Oh man. Yeah, you gotta leave people on food. Why are you making so many press? You haven't scouted anything, and you don't you don't know what he's doing. He could be classic fighting for all you know, and he could just have you know a whole bunch of spearmen and slingers, <laughs> no myth units. You don't know what he's doing. Don't spam units like that. Make sure everything you do, you, you have a reason and knowledge to do it. If you see he's up Hather and you see double monument, you're like, okay, this guy's going to make a lot of fucking pets. And then you make your priest and you upgrade them and you say, you're my bitch now. Deal with my next priests. But you got to make them for a reason. 
That's that's just seven hundred gold that you could have spent on a town center. This is dangerous. Like by the looks of it, you'll get away with it, but like that's what's gonna happen to you. <laughs> yeah. I haven't even watched this game yet and I knew that was a bad idea. Your priest is so slow and vulnerable. Like if he has a Migdol up and like six chariots, they're they're all dead. And all that wonderful seven hundred gold you chose to spend for absolutely no reason. Cause you had no idea what he was doing. It was just completely thrown away. You can run around with your chariots because they're fast enough to get out of situations. The key to being aggressive is being is being able to give yourself the opportunity to disengage any aggression. This was a really nice AE. So much better done than the last game. That was really good to see, man. That was well played. You killed a lot there. When you do a massive push like this, this is like a, a real nice trick you can do for when um, you've been super aggressive in one area, but they could possibly exploit all that aggression and just do what he's done, secure like this side of the map. As soon as you know you're like, you're just going to obliterate him, set your Migdol auto queue to the other side and send units out here to scout. Because if you see he's sending everything over here, you can make a very good call whether you just keep plowing through this way or you just leave the siege towers here and run over the chariots and then start like pressing on that area straight away so like you're mm -hmm. catching his villagers making mcdolls and you're killing his villagers while he's trying to mm -hmm. sneak up mcdolls and you take everything away from him you you got to get that vision so you got to send those units straight away it's a nice trick so people can't like pull off cheesy shit like this like this, that's just annoying I don't know if I'd go for the town center yet. I would kill this and I would kill this. Just go kill the temple. Like make two, kill his temple and just make like two school for him, man. Yeah, you're getting kite a little. At this point, you've committed to this area. And when you commit to an area, you win it with army in, in the early game and then, and then you come back and then you secure it with production because the person who's fighting is production with both evenly matched armies so say each person could like micro to the exact same ability the guy at the production is going to win because his backup units get there faster so you need to get a migdol up here if you want to be able to hold this aggression you've got a lot of food and you need a trade route and if you had a migdol here you would have been able to start making alleys. You, two McDoles, one alleys, one chariots, you'll be pooping on them. 14 minutes in the game, I'd expect three town centers, centers so there's definitely something you can work on. And they got killed. Sucks. Yeah, man, you had this game won. You've just thrown the game. I think. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to be a dick and call it, but yeah, you just had this one. Gotta be more proactive with that economy and uh, taking the map. I, it's big easy fixes though. Like learning how to macro better is. You just watch recorded games, take notes of like where you put villages at what time and what unit, well, what resources you're spending, and then go watch like Magic, go watch the Misto, go watch uh, you know any amount of good ISIS players there were. Um, Maga's games are really good. He shows you how to be super aggressive. Um, if you go back and watch old spoofed games, he's sick too. Um, and, and with better macro, you're just gonna win games like this. Games at the higher levels, like my Rick analyses, it's, it's more about, like, their decision making and control, because there's almost the assumption that both players are macroing to such a high level that that you get better gameplay. 
so it's the first step to improving really. Yeah, the alleys killed you. Yeah, you still don't have enough vision of this game. You just you're giving him the opportunity to do shit to you. You got to deny vision. Denying vision is so key in maintaining yours. Like if you had walls both sides here, and you had vision of anything he was trying to do, like the, he has to play to kill your vision before he can start making any really solid moves because you can react to everything. But right now you're. You're playing in the reactionary stance, whereas if you play proactive and keep the vision, he can't. You have control over the game. It's very dominant in most games, even games where you lose. Like the other guy could have way better vision control than you. Normally, that's the winner, though. That's like a real big theme I find: is, is one guy is always, you know, more dominant on the vision control. The guy that's winning, you know, just naturally has more vision and more of the map. <laughs> that's a nice one. I love doing shit like that. You just rock up to the town center and just like, sup. <laughs> I'd have just kept, kept gone up there and killed that shit. I don't know what these alleys are doing. You just like, ran them around, letting them die. They need to be fighting, man. <laughs> Elephants are useless standing still. Yeah, his army is just so much stronger than yours right now. Yeah, I feel like the game's getting too hectic for you right now. This is like just tons of mistakes are coming through that. Let's go. You can work on speed quite easily. You can just try play without auto queue or something for a bit. Practice using all those control groups. I wonder. I, I want to know what like control groups and you set up because when I play, I use about eight control groups and all the hotkeys. It just makes it so much faster. When it it takes like it's one of those easy things you should just do, and that it takes like it takes like two days to get used to it. Not even that. You play like three or four games, and you're like, why did I never use control groups? But when you first, you know. You, you think about doing it, you're like, fuck, nah, that sounds real hard. <laughs> it's a real stupid, uh, stupid feeling about it. Yeah, you can't really beat Ra now. He's got, you've got a Ford Town Center Oasis, like, his mercs will fight here for an hour. <laughs> Shit. He's got a nice push here. And he's got your trade route almost. He should have easily had this whole area, but yeah. You don't really have a trade route. I wonder if you're empowering the right market. I've done that, like, I've played like an hour 45 game and been empowering the wrong market the whole time. And, oh, I'm such an idiot. Yeah, that looks like GG. I think you're gonna resign anytime soon. So, yeah, just working on that macro, and then when you've been really aggressive on a point and you're going to take it, make sure you have vision of these other areas so you can't cheese out and just secure Godmines there. Because if you had killed this area and build a Migdol here and he couldn't get to the side of the map, so you had this walled and like this walled, and there's no gold mine here, you've ha you've got him gold drained. He two town centered. He spent a lot of gold there. So you got to play for the gold drain, especially when there are two town centers. But dude, it's good you're playing better players. Like, I, I'll definitely play with you, man. If you want to play some games, we can do that, for sure. It's good. Playing with better players gets you so much better. It sucks for like two weeks. You were just getting the sweet shit pounded out of you. <laughs> and, then, and then it's all good. And you improve. And then you go play like some kid. It was like 1675 and you can never fucking beat him. And you just absolutely destroy him. Yeah, you're getting completely murked on. That is just lovely. So good. 
isn't it a great feeling when this guy can just put out a whole wave of mechs? Alright, move on to the last game. I'll do another video for this again.